G'day, Internet. Kale from Vaser here, taking you into the Vaserverse, where we'll show you how you can get control of data authorization in your organization. I'm joined today by Joe Caria, a solutions engineer at Vaser. How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Kale. Excellent. Now, as this series progresses, we'll be diving deeper into specific features and use cases. But for now, let's start with what Vaser is. Vaser is the authorization platform for data. Joe, what does that mean? Well, when we talk about authorization for data, we're talking about who can and should take what action on what data. Exactly. And what Joe's talking about here is a direct relationship between identities, human or machine, and actual data assets, your cloud databases and tables, customer data managed in your SaaS apps, the code in your repositories, your files in cloud storage. These granular data authorization relationships aren't really covered by your IAM platform, or IGA, or even traditional privileged access management. So why does data authorization matter? A few things make this important. One is security, right? Of course, most data breaches leverage overprivileged identities. And a key way to reduce this risk is to apply the principle of least privilege at the level of the sensitive data. You also have to think about compliance. About 80% of companies now have obligations under some kind of privacy law. Your compliance teams need to know, again, at the data level, who can do what? And they need to be able to demonstrate compliance to an external auditor. Plus, you want to do all of this while still thinking about productivity. Absolutely. Remember that you have sensitive data for a reason. Data that the right people can't have access to doesn't have any value. So understanding data authorization means that you can meet your security and your compliance needs without slowing down your people. So let's quickly break down what we're going to cover in the next few sessions. We're going to start with the foundation of what VESA does, which is visualize direct identity to data relationships. Who has access to what? And over the next two sessions, we're going to show you some of the practical things you can do with that information. We'll show you how to apply remediation techniques to achieve least privilege with regards to sensitive data. And we'll show you how to create faster, better, more effective workflows for access reviews, certifications, and audits. So beginning with visualizing identity to data relationships. Let's start with why it's been so hard historically. A key reason is that the information you need to link identity to data doesn't live in just one system, right, Joe? That's right. The metadata that you need to link identities to any one piece of data typically lives across three different systems. Your identity system, like Okta, your cloud native permission systems, like AWS IAM, and the data system itself, a data lake like Snowflake, a cloud storage bucket, or even a SaaS application. Right, and even if you can bring all the right metadata together, another problem is that the language of access policies and permissions is pretty indecipherable. I have here on the screen a list of just a few of the permissions a user can have in relation to an Amazon S3 bucket. So that's one type of resource on a single provider. Add them all up and there are thousands of permissions that an identity could potentially have. And each provider has its own language and schema for describing them. So even if you have access to look at these policies, they're not necessarily going to tell you much about what a user can really do in respect to the specific data that you care about. This is a huge challenge, Kale, because typically the people in the organization who are responsible for sensitive data, who know the data, and the people who actually administer privileged access are not the same people. And you really need an understanding of both to answer the question of who has access to what data. Right. And finally, there's the fact that data doesn't live in one place anymore. Maybe 10, 15 years ago, there was that one on-premise database where all your important assets lived, and that was what you had to worry about protecting. That's not the case anymore. Your company might leverage multiple identity providers, multiple cloud services. Your code lives in the cloud in a version control system like GitHub. There's your cloud storage, your data lake, your SaaS apps. So the data that you need to protect, one, it's moved off-premise, and two, it's really spread out across the cloud. Absolutely, Kale. One trend I'm seeing more and more is organizations adopting a multi-cloud approach for the data. Okay, Joe. So now that we've talked about what's making this hard, how can VESA make it easier? How can we cut through all this complexity and show the real direct relationships of identities to data? So let's start with Snowflake. Within Snowflake, I'll be able to search for all the Snowflake tables that exist within my environment. Once I've searched the Snowflake tables, I now have a full inventory of the 23 Snowflake tables that exist. Once I'm here, I want to understand the relationship that these Snowflake tables have to my Okta users, and therefore create the identity to data relationship. 
So once I'm here, I now see that I have eight Okta users who by membership of three groups are able to assume five Snowflake roles, which then give them access to 13 Snowflake tables. And what we have in this column here, this is what we refer to as VESA effective permissions. And VESA effective permissions really boil down to, can the users create, read, update, and delete data? And we normalize into create, read, update, and delete by first understanding the effective permissions or the native permissions that exist within Snowflake. So we take these permissions, which are native to Snowflake, and we normalize them into effective permissions, again, create, read, update, and delete. So where are we actually getting this information from, Joe? Well, uh, all of the integrations within Beza today are read-only in integrations using service accounts or API service accounts. And while this is an API service account that exists for Snowflake, I also have uh, integrations to, for example, AWS S3. So what I'll do next is I'll find my S3 buckets and the relationship that these 12 S3 buckets have to my 10 Okta users. And again, this is just an API role that allows me to read all the different services and resources that I'm running within AWS. And I can see here that we're actually, we don't just have Okta users, we also have users within uh, Azure AD and uh, AWS SSO as well. So we're, we're looking at, we're actually bringing in data from multiple IDPs, multiple cloud systems and bringing it together in one place. Uh, this is really cool, Joe. Um, but I, I can see that there's a lot of data here, right? And obviously not all data that an organization holds is going to be sensitive. So uh, is there a way we can drill into specific data that you know a, a particular stakeholder cares about? Let's say uh, payment data. That's right. So what we're able to do within VESA is we can actually filter by tags. So if your data has been tagged within your AWS or even within VESA, you're able to filter to specific data sets. In this case, what I'll focus on are those these S3 buckets and specifically the tag for PCI. Uh, so here I can see I have AWS tags uh, labeled PCI. And once I've done selected that tag, I can then hit save and now filter out to the one S3 bucket that contains PCI data. So if I'm the owner of this data, I can go straight here and say, right, who can, who can write this to this bucket? Who can delete from this bucket? That's right. Using these effective permissions, you can understand exactly which users have what permissions on this particular S Sigma finance bucket. Can we have a look and see what the native permissions look like here? Yeah. So we can see these native permissions um, by clicking on this button here and then seeing the native permissions that exist within AWS. And now this can be really difficult for a, a person that's not familiar with AWS native permissions because what we have here is quite literally hundreds of permissions that VESA then boils down into, can the user create, read, update, and delete? I also noticed that these are a completely different language to what Snowflake uses. Uh, and again, we boil these down to a very simple set of permission statements. That's right. Every cloud service provider will use a different uh, naming convention for their permissions. Awesome. So we've had a look at people here, but uh, we know that, uh, you know, as well as human identities, uh, increasingly important are third party services and machine identities. Can we have a look into access for those parties as well? Sure. We can start by first getting a full inventory of all the different service accounts that exist within AWS. And once I'm here, I can then focus on a particular service account and understand that the relationship that this service account has to my data. And what I'll do next after I've selected a particular service account is then I'll hit show data access. And once I've done that, we can see that this service account has actually access to numerous different services within AWS, including S3 buckets, Redshift databases, and my KMS store. Fantastic. And so it's interesting we're seeing here up until this point, we've mostly been uh, showing this from the perspective of a particular resource and asking like who has access to this resource, but we can flip this around, right? And take the perspective of a user, whether it's a machine user or a human and say, you know, what are the effective permissions of this person across the stack? That's right. So what we can do next is I'm actually going to filter out for all of my different principles. And I'm going to start by finding my Okta users and then focusing on one specific user. And I'm going to use Andrew here as my example. Andrew Bishop is going to have access to all of these different services within the environment. So if I drill down a bit here, I can see Andrew Bishop is a member of multiple identity providers. And Andrew Bishop's access extends to AWS services, 
on-premise databases such as SQL, a Snowflake environment, and let's not forget applications like Salesforce, GitHub, and GitLab. Absolutely. So if I'm needing to, say, conduct a review uh, of Andrew, see if this identity is overprivileged, I have one place where I can see absolutely everything that this identity can do. Uh, and it's couched in simple terms that I can understand, even if I'm not uh, an expert in the in IAM or in the data structure of this organization. Thanks, Joe. So just to sum up, what we've seen here is Vaser is taking authorization metadata from across every system you use to visualize direct identity to data relationships. We display them in the simple to understand language of effective permissions, and we give you a single source of truth for data authorization across all your apps and cloud environments. Now that we've shown you this, next time we're going to drill in a little more on what you can do to make this information actionable. We'll show you how to start applying remediation techniques to achieve least privilege in respect to sensitive data. And we'll show you how you can create better, faster, more effective workflows for access reviews, certifications, and audits. Joe, thanks for joining us. No problem. Thanks for having me, Kale. And thanks, everybody, for entering the Vaserverse with us. We'll explore further next time. See you then.